All right, so um, I'm a little bit late to the party on this one, but uh, I had to talk about it because this is just some of the most outlandish, cartoonish levels of uh, corruption that I've ever seen here in the United States, which is uh, kind of remarkable given the fact that we have effectively legalized corruption and bribery, but nonetheless, it looks like there is a threshold, there is a limit to how far you can uh, take your brazen corruption. So here from ABC or NBC News, they say Senator Bob Menendez, this guy from New Jersey, and his wife, Nadine, indicted on bribery charges. So let's just go ahead and get into some of the details here. This shit is absolutely bonkers. So they start here saying Senator Bob Menendez and his wife have been charged with bribery over their alleged acceptance of hundreds of thousands of dollars in return for the use of the senator's influence. Okay, and keep in mind, Senator Bob Menendez is, uh, I think he's the chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, so he has a very high-level position specifically relating to foreign policy, which is going to play an important role as we continue here, okay? So he got hundreds of thousands of dollars in return for the use of his influence to enrich three New Jersey businessmen and benefit the Egyptian government, according According to an indictment filed in Manhattan in the Manhattan Federal Court that was made public last Friday. They say the charges include conspiring to commit bribery, consp conspiring to commit honest services fraud, and conspiring to commit extortion under color of official right. The bribes the couple received, okay, get ready for this, included cash gold bars, payments toward a home mortgage, compensation for a low or no-show job, a luxury vehicle, and other items of value, the indictment alleges. So it really just, it's like Scrooge McDuck levels of corruption here. Gold bars. Gold bars. Okay, he had jackets that were stuffed with cash that say his name on it. And one interesting detail when I was reading the actual indictment in and of itself is that like, I mean, they, they, again, they didn't even really try. Some of the, like, cash that they had on hand had, like, the fingerprints of other people who were involved in these corrupt dealings. Like, just completely insane, right? Cash, gold bars, I mean, just ridiculous shit. Federal agents said that they discovered many of the items when they ex ex executed search warrants in the couple's home in Englewood Cliffs, New Jersey, in June of 2022, which, in my mind, raises another question. Because if they were doing this raid, okay, this long or this this search warrant thing that they did back in June of 2022, okay, over an entire year ago, why was this guy, why did Democrats, knowing that this kind of shit was going on and that this investigation has been open for like a year at this point, why did they allow him to stay in his position knowing that these kinds of things were in the work? That in and of itself deserves a lot of uh, scrutiny. They say, they found more than $480,000 in cash, $480,000 in cash, quote, much of it stuffed into envelopes and hidden in clothing, closets, and a safe, including jackets bearing the senator's name that were hanging in his closet, as well as more than $70,000 in Nadine Menendez's uh, safe deposit box, the uh, indictment alleges. They continue. Agents also allegedly discovered a Mercedes-Benz convertible worth more than $60,000 that New Jersey businessmen Wael Hanna and Joseph Aribe gave to Menendez's wife in exchange for the senator's interference in a state prosecution of Aribe's associate and investigation into an employee whom Aribe referred to as a relative. All right, federal agents also found gold bars worth hundreds of thousands of dollars in the senator's home that were provided by Hanna and another businessman, Fred Day. Daibis, I think, or that's how you pronounce it, Daibis, all three businessmen were also charged in the indictment, which you love to see. I mean, I hope all of these motherfuckers go down for this, right? They say Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer confirmed in a statement on Friday afternoon that Menendez, quote, has rightly decided to step down temporarily. Temporarily? Should it be temporarily? No, you should be calling on him to leave his seat immediately, to resign in disgrace as chair of the Foreign uh, Senate Relations Committee until the matter is resolved. A source close to Menendez had told NBC News earlier in the day that he would step down from his position on the panel while the case proceeds. Now, this guy Menendez has dismissed these allegations against him in a statement saying that prosecutors have, quote, misrepresented the normal work of a congressional office, misrepresented the normal work 
of a congressional office. This normal work apparently included getting $480,000 in cash that you were hiding in like your little letter jackets from high school or something that have your name on it, okay? And gold bars that you were keeping in your house and a $60,000 Mercedes Benz. That was all just part of normal work of a congressional office. I mean, how stupid does he think people are? Now we're gonna get to his full statement here in a second where he uses identity politics and uh, the fact that he is a, a Latino man to uh, basically try to deflect away from these allegations and that in and of itself is absolutely hilarious but there is another point I guess to be made here of him saying that this is the normal work of a congressional office I don't think this level of corruption is necessarily like widespread or normal like the majority of members of Congress are doing this kind of thing like receiving gold bars and cash in exchange for certain things but certainly corruption in this country is 100% normal this is normal within every single congressional office in the entirety of the United States government right I mean we have again a legalized system of corruption and bribery, right? Where you just have to sort of funnel your money through like a super PAC or something and then donate to political campaigns of corrupt politicians who you know are going to do your bidding. And so you keep them in power and then, oh, what do you know? They pass legislation that's beneficial to the people who funded their careers. I mean, like it's that level of corruption that is very normalized and very baked within U.S. politics. And that also should be considered on the same level of criminality as this kind of corruption, right? I mean, it should all be the same just because we legalized it and just because we think that's normal in this country doesn't mean it's not corruption and bribery and that it shouldn't be illegal, right? But they continue. The senator is already facing resignation calls from fellow Democrats, including uh, the New Jersey governor, Phil Murphy, which is pretty big and, you know, credit to him for doing the bare minimum, minimum on this, right? And uh, the other people that I saw uh, were, you know, as they point out here, some other lower members of, like, the New Jersey, like, state uh, Senate and House and all of that um, said that he should resign as well. We also had AOC calling on him to resign. We had John Fetterman who called on him to resign. And as far as I'm aware, as of the time I'm making this video, John Fetterman is the only, the single Democrat. Democratic senator who has called on Bob Menendez to resign over these allegations, okay? One Democratic senator has had the guts, has had the balls to actually make that very basic demand that, hey, if you're accepting gold bars and cash in exchange for doing the bidding of businessmen that are corrupt within your state or foreign nationals and foreign governments, you should probably not only not be on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, right, number one, but you shouldn't even be in this position. You should be in fucking jail for this kind of shit, okay? So the idea that that it's taken this long or, or that Democrats are not uniformly coming out and saying, yes, this guy needs to resign over this is pathetic, right? But credit to, I guess, the couple of people who have called on him to resign again, Phil Murphy, AOC, John Fetterman. I'm sure there's a couple other members of the house. There's a, there's a picture of the gold bars. Okay. Just absolutely amazing shit here. They continue down here. They say, among the allegations in the indictment, just a little more details in terms of what was actually going on here and his motivation, is that Menendez, quote, provided sensitive U.S. government information and took other steps that secretly aided the government of Egypt. I mean, like, is this not, like, borderline, like, treasonous kind of shit here, where you're doing the bidding of a different country and taking bribes in order to do that bidding instead of legislating on what's best for the people who you actually represent here in the United States? It also says that the senator pressured an official at the U.S. Agriculture Department for the purpose of protecting a business monopoly granted by Egypt to Hannah, who was an Egyptian American. According to the indictment, Hannah and Nadine Menendez were friends for many years before she started dating the senator. In early 2018, she informed Hannah that she was dating Menendez and, quote, in the following months and years, they worked to introduce Egyptian intelligence and military off officials to the senator for the purpose of establishing and solidifying a corrupt agreement in which Hannah, with assistance from two other businessmen provided hundreds of thousands of dollars of bribes to the senator and his wife in exchange for Menendez's acts and breaches of duty to benefit the government of Egypt, Hannah, and others, including uh, with respect to foreign military sales and foreign military financing. Okay, so not only are you like doing like a little wheeling and dealing and oh, maybe we, you know, nudge the Senate in one way or another to do something slightly beneficial diplomatically with the government of Egypt, we're talking about like a, an entirely different, different level here, right? Not only was he doing like that sort of corruption, he was actually helping to facilitate the sale of military weapons to the government of Egypt, okay, in exchange for this cash and the gold bars and the Mercedes Benz and all of that, okay? Just, uh, what are we even talking about here? And apparently his wife was like deeply, deeply involved in this, right? She's helping to facilitate and connect him with different, you know, government officials in Egypt and setting up all of these relay points with other people and old friends that she's had for a while, okay? So, I mean, obviously both of them are guilty in this circumstance, but 
They finish off here. They say in May of 2018, the indictment alleges that the senator sought non-public information regarding the number and nationality of persons serving at the U.S. Embassy in Cairo in Egypt from the Senate from from the State Department, which was considered highly sensitive because it could pose significant operational security concerns if disclosed to a foreign government or if made public. Without informing any of his staff on Capitol Hill or the State Department, he then texted that information to his then girlfriend, now wife Nadine. She forwarded it to this girl Hannah, who then forwarded it to an Egyptian government official. Okay, so I mean, again, is this not treason? I'm sorry, is this not an example of treasonous behavior here where you're doing something that the State Department is saying, oh, this is like highly, you know, confidential or classified information. Now, granted, a lot of times the State Department, the Pentagon, they go way overboard with the, the classification of certain information, but you're taking information. First of all, why did you need the information of who was in the U.S. Embassy in Egypt, in Cairo? Number one, why did you want that information? Why did they not question him on why he was asking for that information? And then you're going and you're passing that on through a couple different points to some, you know, some person in Egypt who wanted this information, some government official in Egypt who wanted that information. I mean, just incredibly suspicious shit going on here. The same month, the indictment alleges that Nadine conveyed a request from an Egyptian official to Menendez seeking assistance in editing and drafting a letter lobbying other U.S. senators to support U.S. aid to Egypt. Prosecutors say that Menendez secretly edited and ghost wrote the request letter on behalf of Egypt seeking to convince other U.S. senators to release a hold on $300 million in aid to Egypt. He sent this ghost written letter to her husband from his personal account and then she forwarded it to Hannah who then relayed the draft to Egyptian officials. Then the indictment said that they deleted the email, which Nadine asked Menendez to write a letter. I mean, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? Okay, again, it's like multiple different layers. They were deeply, deeply, deeply baked and reliant for their own lavish lifestyle on this kind of corruption to the point where you are ghostwriting a letter, a lobbying letter to try to lobby the U.S. government to give hundreds of millions of dollars of aid to a different country. Okay, so I mean, again, Obviously, this guy's massively, wildly corrupt. Again, it's a whole different question in terms of like why are other, you know, why are other, uh, you know, senators and other Democrats, high-level party officials, not calling on this guy to resign? I mean, if anything, even just from a public relations perspective, you would think this is gonna make you guys look bad if you try to step in and protect this guy when he is so clearly a, a criminal. Okay, in this kind of a circumstance, so it's just embarrassing at any level, and it's not even the first time that this guy Bob Menendez has been charged with this kind of wheeling and dealing corruption. It also happened back in 2015. Now that case ended in a mistrial after jurors were unable to reach a unanimous verdict, right, which means that you could have had a, a majority of the people on the jury thought this guy was guilty, maybe one or two of them couldn't, you know, uh, go that far as to say that he was guilty, and so he kind of got off of it. Now, the point that I'm making about this, the reason I bring this up, that he was charged previously, is, number one, they already knew that he was corrupt. Number two, they allowed this guy to be the chair of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, okay? That's what they did. Knowing that he already went through this, then knowing that last year, in June of 2022, the feds raided his house, okay, executed a search warrant and found all of this shit, and then for an entire, like, year or so, they kept him in that position, okay? Not even just some, like, obscure committee that isn't related to the kind of corruption that he was potentially allegedly involved in. No, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, when the corruption allegations were specifically centering around him getting payoffs in order to ghostwrite letters lobbying on behalf of a foreign government or to help facilitate the transfer of military aid to that government, okay, in exchange for cash and gold bars. And Democrats were like, yeah, this is the guy who needs to chair this committee. Okay, so now we move on to uh, his defense of himself, I guess if you could call it that, right? So here we have from Ken Klippenstein, just absolutely amazing stuff. This is a quote. He says, those behind this campaign, okay, already, campaign? It's not a campaign. This is a, a federal indictment that you are facing, right? He, he talks as if it's like some like smear campaign by the media or something. No, this is, you are being charged with a crime here, okay? Those behind this campaign simply cannot accept that a first gener generation Latino American from humble beginnings could rise to be a U.S. senator and serve with honor and distinction. Even worse, they see me as an obstacle in the way of their broader political goals. What are you talking about, dude? What are you talking about? First of all, again, 
the origins of this weren't coming from like some even some like right wing people who are making allegations oh the senator's corrupt or super you know far left people like me who are saying oh like you know we, we think you're corrupt because of x y and z this is a an indictment okay that was brought by prosecutors after they found all of this verifiable evidence of your corruption and bribery that you were involved in and he's portraying this as if what it's some smear campaign against him this is people who don't like the fact that he's a latino american and that he's he's hustling and grinding and they just don't like the haters don't like that he's been so successful as a latino first generation latino american i mean what the fuck are we even talking about here it's just pathetic he's trying to use identity politics as a defense for brazen corruption he says i have been falsely accused before I don't know if that was falsely accused. Again, there was a mistrial there because I refused to back down to the powers that be. <laughs> I refused to back down to the powers that be. Uh, what's the powers that be there? I guess the legal system and uh, the people of New Jersey were able to see through the smoke and mirrors and recognize that I was innocent. He says, I have worked every day to repay their trust by fighting to create jobs and strengthen public safety and blah, 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 blah. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. I mean, this is just absolutely phenomenal stuff here, right? I refuse to back down to the powers that be. Refuse to back down. I think it was kind of the opposite of that, if you ask me personally. It seems like you were bowing down to the powers that be, specifically your business friends in New Jersey and specifically the government of Egypt. It seems like that's who you were bowing down to, corporate interests and, uh, you know, overseas interests that were, uh, you know, uh, put in place by these corrupt dealings that you were profiting off of, you and your wife, Nadine, uh, you know, becoming phenomenally wealthy, hundreds of thousands of dollars, gold bars. Apparently, another part of this indictment that was just absolutely hilarious is that there was that one time that he, like, Google searched, like, how much is a kilogram of gold worth or something? So, I mean, just so many aspects of this. Maybe I'll link down the indictment if you want to go read it for yourself. Um, I, I see absolutely no way out of this for him unless, like, all of this evidence, the text messages, the emails, the gold bars, the cash stuffed into jackets, his his legislative record and what he was trying to push for to benefit the people who were paying him. I mean, there, there's no way out of this for me unless all of that is just like entirely fabricated or something like that. So again, I mean, now you have this guy who I guess is sort of like temporarily stepping down from his position on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. But I mean, clearly that's not enough. I mean, this guy, again, be, belongs behind, you know, a, a jail cell, right? Along with his wife, Nadine, and a lot of these other business partners as well. So, um, you know, I mean, that's what he deserves at the end of the day. Uh, it's pathetic that it's only been a handful of Democrats who have been willing to come out and say that, you know, Governor Phil Murphy of New Jersey, uh, John Fetterman, the Senator from Pennsylvania, AOC, Congresswoman from New York. So like, you know, you have a couple of them that I've seen that have come out. But the fact that this is not a uniform condemn condemnation from the Democratic Party, especially considering that this guy was previously alleged to be involved in similar kinds of corruption and that it ended up in a mistrial. It's just pathetic that it's even gotten to this point, that this guy's even still a senator, let alone that he was sitting on the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. I mean, just completely fucking ridiculous at that level. And um, yeah, I mean, I guess I'll just finish off making the same point, which is that, you know, not only is this kind of corruption, uh, very obvious corruption, right? It's in your face, it's gold bars, it's cash, it's easy for anybody to see. But again, Again, this is this should be treated in the same exact way that accepting money from a billionaire or accepting money from a corporation in order to fund your political career that should also be considered criminal that should also be considered illegal in a functioning democracy instead of one that is essentially a government that is ruled by a handful of oligarchs who are just so phenomenally wealthy in this country that they can largely dictate what legislation is going to be put on the table what legislation is going to be blocked and uh, you know if you really want to restore faith in the American people people's trust in our government, right? Because an overwhelming majority of the American people despise Congress. You know, you would think that you would start with getting big money out of politics and this, you know, this corrupt uh, sort of like cycle of corruption where you have this revolving door in DC politics where a lot of these politicians, which was part of this indictment as well, uh, you know, get some cozy job from some corporation or their family member gets a cozy job that is a no-show job or they show up once a week or similar to like what Hunter Biden was doing where he sits on some board that he's not qualified to sit on. I mean, like there's just so much corruption that is deeply baked within this country that, um, you know, it's an embarrassment. It's an embarrassment to any country that wants to pretend to be a functioning democracy. Everyone is saying good politic guy has the best politic. Believe me. No one does it like him. Believe me. Everyone is saying.